Okay, perfect. So, hi, my name is Sonia Barlow. I am the founder of a female empowerment and diversity network called Like Minded Females. The reason why I founded Like Minded Females, I'll play through uh, in our discussion today. Uh, but our discussion is called How to Diversify the Data. So, kind of just echoing what's already been mentioned. Since 2015, I have been a woman of color in technology, and so I very much understand, appreciate, and empathize with those that are women, women of color, and those that identify as, as you know, any gender that is non-man <laughs> in technology, because <laughs> we're all in a, in a little group together. I'm also the angry brown feminist. <laughs> uh, anybody else here, the angry brown feminist? Yeah? Anyone here just the angry feminist at work? <laughs> yes. I'm also the angry brown feminist and, you know, comical enough, why is that? It's because I now challenge the status quo and I make sure that when I think personally something isn't being done fairly that I speak up about it. But the thing is that I haven't always done that. So I spent three years in work, at work, even now, um, and it's not just in your professional setting, sometimes it's in your personal setting as well, just listening to people say things, their biases, their comments, just comments that they shouldn't be making. You know, like, oh, you're so girly. What does that mean? Like, I just don't understand what that even means. And so now I've been labeled as the angry brown feminist. Why am I the angry brown feminist? Well, it's actually now because I challenge, but I challenge because I'm tired of feeling tired of going into work and trying to prove myself. Like many of us today, we're in a constant battle with the data telling us that we're not good enough, that we're not confident enough, that we're not, uh, you know, that we don't have the right skill set, let's per se. And what truly triggered me is that when I transition from university to the corporate world, I found it really difficult. University, unfortunately, doesn't teach you real life skills. It doesn't teach you how you have to change your personality when you start working, or the way you should dress, or the way you should do a firm handshake, or what it means to be confident. And in 2015, I actually had a manager say to me to leave my moods at home. I didn't know what that meant then, and I definitely don't know what it means now. But the point is that for you to bring your most authentic self to work, you should be allowed to be the fullest personality that you are. And so for me, my moods mean my personality, and my personality means my energy, it means my passion, it means my curiosity, it means the fact that I like to question things and I like to learn. And so that took me on a downward spiral. Plus, how can I leave my moods at home when the data tells me that I'm not good enough? Being a woman in technology and a woman in data, the data tells me I'm less than 15%. And as a woman of color, I'm less than 3%. And what's more than that, it tells me that compared to my male counterpart, I'm also paid less for doing most likely more, juggling more, balancing more. Because as mentioned before, you're expected to not only do your day job, but you're expected to do the extracurriculars as well. You're expected to do the external activity because that's just what suits you as the gender that you are. So on average, a woman in data or a woman in tech is paid 18% less than her male counterpart. And if you're an ethnic woman, then you can add an additional 20% that you're not getting. So how can I leave my moods at home when not only am I the minority, but I'm definitely not being paid for the effort that I'm putting in. And then you come to personality types. So as those who self-identify as female, we are innately softer, let's say. We have emotional intelligence, which is far higher than our male counterpart. But the problem is that when we come to work and we have certain moods, and moods don't mean anger, it doesn't mean frustration, it just means we're confident, we're loud, we're happy, we're passionate. Well, that gets misconstrued as we're passive, aggressive. Who here has been called aggressive? I feel sorry because I'm sorry for you guys because it's also happened to me. It's 
so I know how much it affects someone. Who here has been called bossy? That's a lot of hands. Who here has been called arrogant? And then you get the fun one, that because you have emotions, you're emotional. So you're like, well, obviously I, I have emotions. Like, that, that makes no sense. But as a male, flip it around, you're confident, you're a great communicator, you're educated. I mean, we're all kind of educated, but that's fine. We're observant and you're a risk taker. But the point here today, and the point which I'm trying to make, is that we shouldn't be shy of taking our moods to work. We shouldn't be shy of showing up as our most authentic selves. And we shouldn't be shy to challenge the status quo. And in return, if we challenge the status quo and we start diversifying our talents, our skill sets, and the way that we show up to work, we can eventually diversify the data. And we can change the stats that ultimately are our own barriers. But we have to do that as a collective. So recent studies have showed that in the next five years, those softer skills and those softer skills that we as females identify with and very much as innate to our personality, well, they'll be in demand six times higher than they are now. Data also su suggests that 70, sorry, 57% of leaders think it's more important to have softer skills than harder skills. And so softer skills are those moves, those personalities, the communication styles, how you interact with one another, how empathetic you are, how kind you are, how much you listen to the other person. And so, one of the reasons why I created Like-Minded Females was because as someone who identified as a woman in the workplace, and especially in technology, to have comments like, leave your mood at home, or to find the transition period quite difficult, it affected not only my confidence, but my mental health and my self-esteem. And I'm sure, like many of us, it affects your progression and how you see you moving up the chain, up the ladder, and the kind of jobs that you apply for, the kind of dreams which you have, and the kind of community that you surround yourself with. And so Like Minded Females was my way of helping myself, forming a community group, but most importantly, making sure that there is a community of us in tech, in data, and enterprise who are coming together, who are sticking together, and who are helping each other through these tough times that we all have. And ultimately what we do is we smash the status quo and the societal barriers. So how do we do that and how do I encourage you all to diversify the data and what are the three things that I want you to do today as you leave and implement into your life going forward? Well, for one, I want you to know your strengths. Forget what they tell you about things that you need to improve and forget what they tell you about your weaknesses. Think about your top three strengths. Are you adventurous? Are you enthusiastic? Are you a caretaker? Are you a listener? Are you patient? What are your three key strengths? I encourage you all to think about your key three strengths today and the course of this week, to note them down and to start mindfully and consciously working on them within your everyday lives. Because what I can guarantee you in return is that once you do so, your opportunities, your growth, and the way that you diversify not only yourselves but the data around us will come organically because you will say yes to those opportunities which you know that you're passionate about and play to your strengths. The second is celebrate your wins. So as, again, let's be gender specific, as women, Studies show and research has shown time and time again that we are terrible at celebrating our wins. We are constantly thinking about the next step, the next win, what we could have done better. Whereas our counterparts are thinking, oh, that was a great, great day. I did, I did awesome. I'm great. And then they go home and they're loving life. Whereas we're like, oh, I could have done that assignment so much better. Or, oh, I forgot to put that comma in that email that I sent, and then someone's going to find out that I can't write emails, and they're going to fire me. Like, that 
frame of thought goes through a woman's mind, and I don't quite know why. But it's about celebrating the small wins that we have, the tiny wins, the big wins. A tiny win could just be showing up when you feel like you don't want to or when you feel low. A tiny win could be walking instead of taking the tube. A tiny win could be working on a challenging question which you don't necessarily have the answer to but you're going to attempt it. Those are tiny wins. You have to celebrate the small wins. The big wins we do naturally but it's the smaller wins that are going to help you grow, take you forward. And when someone asks you a question like, so what did you achieve today? Or tell me, you know, in the last week something awesome you've done. You can, you can respond, you have something to say. And then inevitably it's increasing the, it's increasing the happiness and the confidence that you have inside of you. So that's the second thing that I encourage you all to do. And I challenge you all to do is that this week, Start noting down your wins. And if it's easier, take out your phones and go on your notepads and just write one win a day. If it's easier, do it weekly in a journal. And if it's easier, then use the community around you, especially those here today, as buddies and as accountability buddies and share all the wins that you have, that you've created, that you've achieved, and see where it takes you. And thirdly and most importantly is find your community. So, again, in my instance, and is unlike many of us, I didn't have a sense of community, and so being a woman in technology, you often feel alone, isolated, and deprived of a friendship group. But look around you here today. All of you are here for the right and the same reason. So I encourage you to connect with one another, to exchange numbers, to go for a coffee. The easiest method that I uh, encourage for that is I have a 3-2-1 rule, which I spread like fire, to be honest, whenever I do a talk or a workshop. It's in any social setting, in any networking event, I encourage you to talk to three people, to take two of those conversations outside of this kind of networking opportunity, and to meet at least one of them for a coffee a month. So over a year, if you implement that, you've met 12 new people. You've spoken to over 30 people. That's a massive achievement considering that most of us go into these situations worried and anxious and panicking and thinking, I'm not going to click with anyone. I don't know how to find my community. But even more than that, we are all on our phones and we all are using technology. So look at the communities around you on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Twitter. Start engaging. And if you're not confident to engage, just start listening and seeing where you can input. And so these are the three ways how we are going to and how we will diversify the data. One, we all will and can and should and must acknowledge our strengths, appreciate them and use them to benefit us. Two, we can, we must, we should and we will celebrate our wins. And three, we can, we must, we will find a sense of community, and move forward. And most importantly, bring your moods to work and let them have your most authentic self because that is what you deserve wherever you are and that's what they deserve from you. Thank you so much. Thank you.